All right, let's do Ben Shabibo on on. Uh, Here is here is Morgan. Morgan. Says it. Well, that's quite an intro we've given you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. You that. better live up to it. I, well, I mean, I look at that old tape and it, suddenly I hit puberty, right? I mean, like this. <laughs> we both look so young. Oh my god! Uh, I mean, Please was, nuke Hoscord. Thank you for the ten gifted ago. subs. I will not be nuking Hoscord. I will be running the top of the hour ad break, however. Years ago, right? Ten years ago, and it was interesting because I was at the time, you know, getting very pee. Uh, angry about a, a series of mass shootings in America with a British sensibility and saying, you know, we, obviously my country, we don't really have any guns. And I was, you know, hectoring and lecturing, I guess, Americans about their gun laws. And it went down as badly as that phrase would suggest, particularly with, with you. But what was interesting was when, I, when you came on, I thought, who's this snotty little kid <laughs> who's going to start trying to take me on? And then it rapidly became clear to me you were a hell of a lot smarter than you appeared. <laughs> um, so uh, we moved on from then. Anyway, we've, we've had our, our kiss and makeup interview after that. But I, I, I think what was pretty interesting to me, 2016, so seven years ago now, you tweeted a, a tweet. This is your pinned tweet to this date. Simply said, facts don't care about your feelings. And if any phrase, I think, perfectly epitomises this woke era that we have somehow stumbled into, it's fact. Because the woke brigade put feelings before facts. How do we get there? Well, I mean, I'm, culturally speaking, I think that what happened is that the value of subjective authenticity became the core to pretty much everybody. So the, the idea of individualism was taken to its logical extreme, which was, I'm so important and everything I feel is so important that I can ignore the rest of reality. And in fact, reality is an imposition on me. Institutions, rules, roles, the rules of the road, all that sort of stuff, it's an imposition on who I truly am. And in order for me to be actually free, I have to speak my truth. Now, you know, as I've said and you've said, there's no such thing as my truth, right. right? There's your opinion and then there's the truth. But as soon as you start speaking in terms of my truth, as soon as you start saying, well, there's how I feel about the world and how I feel about the world is the core of me, what that also does is it means that other people are aggressing on you when they disagree with you. Mm. Because obviously a shared reality means that we can disagree about things out here, but you know, we sort of as human beings are intact. But the moment that you start to identify your truth with the truth, then anybody attacking your truth is attacking you as a human being. And I think that that's where we've gone, is, is this movement away from, we're having a political debate, but again, we can go out and have a drink afterward because we are, we are not the political debate. The political debate's a different thing. To my politics are who I am, or my right. feelings about who I am, or my feelings about the world, that's the thing that matters more than anything else. And what's extraordinary? I mean, I remember this. We're going to come to them later, sadly, but Meghan and Harry, when they weren't on Oprah <laughs> with. The issue is that, like, Ben's quote-unquote truth unironically revolves around, like, harming marginalized communities further by, one, denying systematic oppression uh, and its existence, and, two, Asking for more of it from the government. So, like, it's not about, like, you know, the truth. I mean, if you want to talk about the truth that Ben denies regularly, it's systemic racism. It's the truth that systemic racism exists. Ben denies it all the fucking time. He does. He tries to reduce it down to individual actions. Oh, there's no such thing as systemic racism. It's only just individuals that are racist. That's not the case. Yeah, this motherfucker actively says that God cannot make bad laws and proce proceeds to justify God's truth. Yeah. Not to be too much of a Reddit atheist, but the facts don't care about your feelings guy using his made-up religion to justify all those dumbass beliefs is truly astounding. Exactly. No, you're... I mean, it is true that that is a silly way to go about things. But, like, it's at the heart of his fucking arguments for abortion, for example, even though his own religion believes that abortions uh, are allowed. <laughs> Free. And she started talking constantly about my truth and Oprah was endorsing your truth and everything. I was like, I'm living in a sort of mad world where truth is no longer factual. It's just whatever you're feeling in any given moment. It seems That's not the case, dude. Thing. Oh, my God, dude. I'm sorry, but, like, conservative motherfuckers love crying about their feelings more than literally any number of, like, uh, gender-critical-taking uh, college freshmen, okay? It's literally all of their feelings all the time, non-fucking-stop, they never shut the fuck up. They're currently doing it. They're crying about their feelings about the rest of the world 
not coming to terms with their understanding of the truth. That's literally you crying about your fucking feelings. I mean, he's right. No, he's not. He's not even remotely right. Thing for a democratic society that you move away from fact based, from science, whatever it may be, to just feel like nobody wants to move away from fact based shit. They just made that up. He is 100% right. Ben is so good. Love him. That's a lie. True. Like, who? Who wants to move away from a fact based society? You think it's the fucking guys that talk about climate change? Okay a scientific consensus that 99% of scientists believe or the fucking dudes that are like, no, it's actually fake because I'm being paid by the oil lobby. Who's trying to move away from scientific truth? The people that believe in evolution or the people that think that it was Adam and Eve? Who? Who's advocating for moving away from a science-based society? Shut the fuck up! It's mind-boggling to me that these guys have dominated the space so aggressively with their full-court press that, like, while they simultaneously destroy books and remove them from public libraries and shit, they make it seem like it's the libtards that want censorship. Ben Shapiro advocating for anti-BDS laws has the audacity to fucking claim that he's a free speech defender. That's wild. And so many suckers are duped into believing it as well. I trust Ben over... No, don't ban him. He said I'm overly emotional. He trusts Ben over overly emotional people like myself. No, he had a really good take. I think, I think we're going to have fun with that chatter. I'm going to unban that chatter because actual dumbass. Because emotional men are blind and cannot see the truth. Oh, totally, dude. Totally. I'm an emotional, I'm an overly emotional man. Ben Shapiro, on the other hand, is not emotional at all. Ben Shapiro cries every fucking episode about trans people existing in society and how that's destroying and eviscerating the fucking West. And moral, moral degeneracy is actually destroying the West. You just agree with him, you fucking idiot. It's not that he is not emotional. It's just that you agree with him. So you don't recognize it when he brings up issues that are complete fucking fabrications. That's it. That's the problem. Based, he doesn't scream and cry like you. Yes, he does. And also, you're once again showing that you are nothing more than an animal, okay? Are you an animal? Do you have no capacity of understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth? You only can look at shapes and colors and like the visceral reaction that you have is all that matters, you fucking dingus. You donkey. That's just the self-report that you're a stupid person. That you, unlike most human beings, cannot comprehend anything when you hear someone speak in ways that you don't want to hear them. You're like, oh, well, you're being a little emotional about, like, I don't know, trans people being fucking uh, uh, legislated away from existence. Like, yeah, that's, uh, okay, I guess that undermines my point then. No, it doesn't. You, unfortunately, you, unfortunately, are too stupid. And you're admitting that you're stupid. You're doing the thing that conservatives do all the time. Vice signaling. Okay? You're signaling about your vices. And not only that, but you're also signaling that you are a fucking stupid person. Why are you so mad, bro? Chill. They just have a different opinion. I love the secondary take that uh, immediately comes into play here. Why are you so mad, bro? This is not just a different opinion. Okay, I'm not just talking about a difference in opinion here. I'm yelling at a chatter for thinking that it is a virtue to be a donkey. Okay, it is not a virtue to be a stupid person. Yeah, you say a whole bunch of nothing. You say a whole bunch of stuff that has no meaning behind it. No, I see. I say a lot of things that have meaning behind them. You're too stupid to understand it, unfortunately. So I urge you. Okay, so I urge you. Please, please just take a deep breath, okay? Take a deep breath. You're with us. You are blind and cannot see. Okay, stop. Just stop writing shit in the chat. 
and just take a deep breath and listen to the words. And maybe then, instead of spitting out reactions like a fucking chatbot, you might be able to comprehend some of the things, at least some of the things, not all of them, but at least some of the things that I'm bringing up. And for the record, you can reban me if you get too emotional, brother. Aww. Oh, the the classic, did I trigger you take? No, you didn't. Okay? You did not. We'll let you live. We'll let you live because you are an absolute fucking dumbass. And you haven't really, uh, you know, you haven't really said anything too spicy yet. <sighs> this is an unfortunate problem with a lot of people who fancy themselves to be edgelords. The reality is that, like, they'll go, are you triggered, libtard? Meanwhile, they're fucking triggered about the existence of miscegenation. You know what I mean? Like, you are scared that society is changing at a pace that you cannot comprehend because, unfortunately, you're too backwards to just let it happen. Now that you've said that, they're going to think of the most bannable thing to try and own you. I mean, if they say something bannable, I'll ban them. Feelings dominating a culture and if you defy those feelings you are instantly branded the enemy and you must be destroyed well there's no conversation to be had right i can't have a conversation about your feelings you're feeling your feelings there's no way for me to dissuade you from you can't deny my feelings Co correct i can't deny <laughs> i can deny the facts that you bring to the table but the problem is once that becomes irrelevant then we're just at an impasse there's no more conversation to be had how big a problem is it that at the same time simultaneously i think you've had the rise of very populist leaders like Donald Trump, Boris Johnson in the UK, uh, and others who play pretty fast and loose with the truth. That you have people who say, well, hang on, you talk about the sanctity of truth, but you've got these political leaders, US presidents, British prime ministers, where they don't seem to care about the truth. They just bumble through with whatever suits them from day to day. How dangerous is that to the whole Shebang. I mean, I think that that is dangerous, but it's dangerous in a different way. And, and it's also dangerous in a more consistent and, I would say, historically uh, precedented way. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the fact is that politicians have always fibbed to us. I mean, there, there's nothing right. new about politicians saying things that are not true, from, from LBJ to, to George W. Bush to, to Donald Trump and Barack Obama. I mean, like, literally every politician. And Joe Biden. I mean, yeah, to, to, to President Biden. Bumpers, yeah. Right? You, see, you see this all the time. So the idea of a politician not telling the truth or shading the truth in particular ways, that, that's not what's new. I think what's new is where people are presented with data and their immediate response isn't, let me bring you some data that rebuts that data, but I don't even have to look at your data because your motivation is bad. That's not true. Ben Shapiro is once again arguing against the complete fabrication. He's arguing against something that's made up, which is ironic because like his side has Donald Trump who like doesn't even try to fucking massage the numbers. Ben is like a product of a bygone era of old school neocon conservatism that at least tries to like justify the American Enterprise Institute type conservatism, the Heritage Foundation type conservatism that tries to like find data or massage numbers enough or cherry pick enough to make it seem like there's actual data on his side. But like that's not the case. That 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 era of conservative politician died out regardless. And no, as far as like science having a fucking bias or a slant yeah it's on the it's on the side of of uh you know it's certainly closer to uh liberals and the and the things that they talk about so you know i myself am not a liberal but even i recognize that this philosophy how, how, how dangerous is it though that we've also become incredibly tribal i think more than i can ever remember in modern history actually you know, when I read your Twitter feed, I think you're always prepared to call out your own side if you genuinely feel there's been some egregious wrongdoing that they've done or a terrible mistake or whatever. But the number of people prepared to do that now, on social media in particular, is minuscule. Most people park themselves into their tribe, whatever that tribe may be, and there is no moving them. There's no deviation. Even Yeah, I mean, it's two guys that agree with one another talking about how, like, the other side is just, like, they're on... They're unmoving. They're unshakable. It's just like, bitch, what about you? You're literally, you're doing it right now. And if the facts change, and again, it plays into, well, if your feelings are, are the facts, then if you feel that fact is wrong, well, that's enough. Right, but the, the tribalism that I think has, has 
cropped up is rooted in a philosophy called the motivism, which is the idea that everybody's actual viewpoints are not driven by their view of the facts. It's, it's driven by their internal emotions. Mm -hmm. What that allows me to do on the, on the converse is mm -hmm. attribute malicious intent to people that I'm arguing with. Mm -hmm. And it means that I get to ignore all of their facts. The reason that, that I'm disagreeing with you is because I'm good and you're a bad person. And Dude, I'm sorry, but like, I can't, this is so 2016 era. Like I said, like this is this is pre Trump, okay. It's pre Trump. Who the fuck is even claiming that they have facts on their side at this point? You know what I mean? Like Republicans don't give a fuck about that. They give a fuck about power. This would be interesting React content in 2018. Yeah, when a when a a, a younger Hassan would be like, "That's not true. The facts are never on your side, Mister Ben Shapiro. The facts are actually." on the side of uh, liberals. There's a there's a reality that has a liberal bias, okay? Facts don't care about your feelings, sir. What that means is that people on my own side, for example, they might be upset with me for talking with people on the other side of the aisle because why would you talk to somebody who's a nasty person who has bad motivations? And the same thing on, on people on the other side talking to me. I was having a conversation one time with a very, very large left-wing podcaster. This is probably 2018. And I said, you know, we should really do like a crossover podcast for the midterm elections. It'll do huge business. And my side will be totally fine with it. It'll be great. And he said, your side will be fine with it. My side will kill me. Right. And that, that's probably right. But that's right. the way it's gone. And Bill Maher said to me, you know, that comedy used to be rooted really in, in right-wing extremism being comedic. And, and that was the, that was where liberal comics like him could, could get their material. Now he said it's mainly to the left. It's the woke. This is the, the, yeah, no, that's another fucking old, out-of-touch asshole. No, right-wing extremism is still fucking hilarious. Definitely. Like, it's still certainly hilarious. Are there rad libs that also fucking lose their minds in, in ways that are vicious and also hilarious? Certainly, I make fun of them, too. But this notion that it's like most comedy is coming from the blue-haired liberals, blue-haired Marxists or whatever, like, no, that's silly as fuck. ...area of politics that gives him the most comedic material. And he can't believe it. As a liberal himself, he feels just really frustrated that they don't understand how ridiculous and laughable their positions on things have become. Well, it's, it's, it's driving a bunch of people who consider themselves center or center left into the arms of people who are more conservative, actually. Mm -hmm. I've made the point before that I think the future of the West may ride not. Yeah, what will the, man, what will the fucking, uh, what will the progressive movement do now that they lost Bill Maher? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. On people who agree with me most of the time, you know, conservatives, traditionalists. I think the future of the rest, uh, West might, might ride on people who consider themselves kind of traditional liberals, who may agree with some of the left's prescriptions yes. economically, but who disagree with the way they want to get there, which is very often by silencing debate, using censorship, shutting things down. So the question is going to be, are they willing to put off utopia for a while in order to engage in the debate? Because I've the always thought, like myself, I've always thought myself not really as a political ideologue, right? I, I think I'm pretty centrist. And call out everybody really i'm more i see myself as a journalist fundamentally and don't think that being partisan helps that particular profession very much as we've seen from those who've actually drifted down into being partisan as journalists it doesn't work you become an activist uh, but no so centrism is not being devoid of ideology centrism is just literally whatever the ideology is and acting like neoliberalism which is the dominant ideology is not a thing. It is just a way of existence. Okay? There is no such thing. It's stupid. It just means you're, you're advocating for the status quo, which, by the way, ironically, is what everyone is advocating for for the most part. People take the current way of existence for granted. They don't even think about it as though, like, it's bad or wrong. People that are, like, openly on the right want to pull it more to the right Okay, people on the left want to pull it more to the left. The idea that like centrism uh, is a is a real viable thing is just you know it's not. It's the it's just your your exactly centrism is just deferring to the hegemony exactly hegemony. I was saying the other day, you know, are you a conservative? I said, well, I've never identified as a conservative, but the fa the farther lunatic that the left woke go the more the pendulum swings, and eventually we all get sucked into thinking, well, OK, actually, by comparison to this, I probably am 
getting a bit conservative? Because I think they're lunatics. I, I think what's happening right now, and it's happening in a bunch of countries, is people are just craving any sense of normality. And common and, sense. And no one is providing it to them. Right. No one is providing it to them. They're taking a, a slap at the people who are... Yeah, dude, you you certainly are providing normality. Mister, there is no such thing as a fucking non-living wage. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I always go to Ben Shapiro to understand what is really going on when he tells me that, like, the average American that's suffering from fucking medical bills or, or whatever kind of, like, unnecessary amount of, uh, you know, cost uh, of living increases, uh, all of that is actually bullshit because Ben Shapiro told me so, and I'm just not working hard. I should be working harder, Sigma Grindset style. And that's when I get my sense of normality from Ben. Responsible for the status quo as licensed to now do whatever they want. And so you're seeing the pendulum swinging wildly side to side because if you're a political leader, you're trying to harness the passions of the moment to get done the thing that you really, really want to get done. When in reality, the population just wants things to kind of just stop. Just like I mean, leave us alone and stop. He's reterming the fact that the reactionary politics is born from the left insulting their idea of what's normal. Yeah, exactly. Um... Yeah, he, Ben Shapiro constantly shits on what could be possible, right? Like a better future. That's how he makes his living. While simultaneously upholding inequality as the norm, and in many such cases, inequality is the norm, and a lot of people are conditioned to think that it is the norm. So, of course, that's the reason why he can get away with saying this is common sense, of course. Well, you know, not. Stop. Right, I totally agree, and I think I think that's the majority of people, right? I mean, to oh, by the way, the 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 best argument against that is the uh, the appeal to nature fallacy, Mister Logic and Facts, just like every other fucking debate lord, regularly utilizes logical fallacies. The idea that there is some, there the idea that there is like human nature, and that uh, you know we need to appeal to it, we need to abide by it is in my opinion, unnatural. The entire existence of humanity is by destroying nature. Like, there is no, there is no fucking uh, skyscrapers in human nature. You know, we built those things, okay? There's no such thing. There's no, like, no, no part of our lives is, is normal in comparison to the rest of nature. Not natural, it's not normal. Today, Rolling Stone uh, published a, an opinion piece on why cancel culture is good for democracy. And I read this piece, and it was so completely deluded. Because of yeah, and then they find, like, some fucking random person that wrote something and then talk about it as though that's, like, definitely the... the as though that is definitely just uh, what every liberal thinks. No one likes cancel culture. It's not a thing. And the right weaponizes cancel culture regularly, okay? The right loves using cancel culture. Lamau, facts, literally a Rolling Stone op-ed. Yeah. Every now and then someone writes an article about cancel culture or whatever, and then they go, oh, that's it. That's how everyone is. Technically, everybody loves cancel culture, okay? And everybody hates cancel culture when it's done to them or to their side. But don't act like this is not a thing that uh, the right utilizes, and the right utilizes it more efficiently and more effectively, too. Of course, cancel culture is the antithesis of a democracy. It's actually the antithesis of liberalism. You can't pretend to be liberal with what that actually was intended to mean and support cancel culture. I think, I think the left... Bro, talking about cancel culture, the band, someone who's not having the same point of view, Lamau, notice how this person had to make up an example because I didn't actually ban that other guy who was chirping because he simply disagreed with my take. Banning someone in my chat is not cancel culture either, you fucking idiot. It's just housekeeping. I'm not banning you either, by the way. But remember, you are always taking advantage of the more democratic structure that we have in comparison to other communities. Okay? Okay. People love to say this is a hug box. But the real reason why I ban a bunch of people is because they like derailing the stream, like you just did, because you are a narcissist. You want 
27,000 people to pay attention to you and your dumbass point of view, which is understandable. Everybody, everybody wants that feeling every now and then. You know what I mean? But you could do it in a funny way. You could do it in a clever way. You could do it in a way that actually is productive and plays along with what we are looking at. But you couldn't do that. So instead, you went for what was easy. Okay? Bro, what is he saying? This is the guy I didn't ban, by the way. The Ben Shapiro fan that I did not ban. And even though I did not ban that guy, the other guy came in and went, dude, you're banning people that don't agree with you, Lamal. Cancel culture. Anyway. He uses cancel culture in a very different way than most of us use cancel culture. When we talk about cancel culture, typically what we mean is you say something that they don't like on the air, and they decide to secondarily boycott your advertisers, or they go to your bosses right. and call for you to be fired. Right. And th that's what we mean by cancel culture. What they mean is, well, we're allowed to disapprove of you. Well, sure, you're allowed to disapprove. Turn the channel. Right? You don't have to subscribe to right. Daily Wire. You don't have to watch your show. Right? But what they do with that instead is they attempt to get you kicked off the air not by dint of lack of ratings or something, but just because they're so angry that they're going to go yell at people and bother them until you get kicked off the air. That, that's, that's what cancel culture really is. I interviewed Congressman George Santos uh, this week, who even by the standards of fibbing, <laughs> fibbing politicians... I mean, it was quite startling. I'll just play the clip where he admits to being a terrible liar. What? Oh, George Santos. OK, that's awkward. <laughs> this guy's just serving... On those okay. no subjects. Congress, right? He's one of the most powerful politicians in the country, but if Adam... Not, uh, almost the apotheosis of what politics has reached, which that's... Okay, I don't Jewish care about them talking about George Santos. Jewish. No, he's you have no to be not true and try to follow this the best audience. It's it's something that, I mean... I, it's truth to you now. That everything comes out of your mouth or that you write is fact. I mean, I, it's it's the most important thing to me because I have to sleep at night. I mean, it, it, it's it's something that, that I try to think about as much as humanly possible is... is Never lie to your audience. Never right. say to your audience a thing that you know to be not true and try to follow this the best data possible. And that does mean that you're very often having to be more nuanced than, than sort of the politics of the situation mm -hmm. may allow. Because the easiest position in politics is always to take the, the hardest right or the hardest left position, the sort of most pure, most easily understood position, or to just play the easiest game of all, which is, again, my opponent is a bad guy. My opponent is a person who hates your When we had our, our dust up at CNN about gun control. Yeah, Ben, on the other hand, he has a lot of nuance, dude. That's why he advocated to... Uh, that's why he claimed that the, the, the fucking uh, civil rights movement was fraudulent, you know? Just... That's why he thinks the government should not interfere in private businesses stopping black people from entering their premises, which is a very real nuanced take from Ben Shapiro. You know, that's not the furthest right wing take he could take. Technically, he should he could advocate to like just straight up kill black people on site. He doesn't do that. So I guess he's not he's doing a, a, a nuanced uh, position on it. Oh, for example, I'm not going to go over all that mm -hmm. again, but. Had I been very different with you, if I'd been very, like, respectful and said, look, I'm a British guy, these aren't my laws, I'm just as horrified as you are by these massacres, and didn't talk about gun control, which I think has always been a terribly inflammatory phrase for many Americans. They don't want to be controlled. And they certainly don't want to hear a British accent telling them about how, how yeah, there should be more control. But if I'd phrased it as about gun safety, if that had always been the debate in America, how do you make it safer in a country that has 400 million firearms in circulation. Would that have been a more constructive debate, do you think? I think it would have been a more informative debate. And the, the reason being, I think, that clarity is, is very much opposed sometimes by, by passion. And we, listen, we all get passionate about these issues. I'm, I'm not going to pretend I'm not passionate on my show or I'm completely dispassionate mm -hmm. in all circumstances. I'm obviously not. Um, but, you know, I, I think that that would have allowed for the kind of discussion where we could have looked at data from various areas of the world, where we're have regulations been effective? Where have they not been effective? What are, as I said on the show, actually, at the time, I believe, like, what are the risks and rewards of particular policies? That, that's where the good discussion area, I think, gets done. Have you yeah, except you never have that. Like, everything Ben is talking about, about how the left is or whatever, is exactly what he does. And the only time he brings up evidence is when he's cherry-picking shit to disingenuously frame an argument. Like, if he truly cared about the data, he wouldn't be advocating for the side he's advocating for. Do you agree with literally anything Ben says? Or, I mean, I don't know. Probably not. It'd be very hard. 
I'm sure there's something I agree with. As far as what Ben talks about, but as far as his political perspective, no, not really. You I mean, just final point on the gun thing, but it, and I'm aware many viewers who watch this in America own guns and support yeah, I own guns, the yeah. Second Amendment rights and so on. Where do you see the, the line going? We actually do need law enforcement to have more ability and will mm -hmm. to carry out for example, when they know somebody is severely mentally disturbed or somebody is shooting a gun at their mother, which we have we've had a case like that, that would be a time where you actually remove the person's guns and, and keep track of them, make sure they can't actually get guns. Right? I mean, See, if I had my way, again, when I was doing that debating, I would have had this kind of conversation. I can look back at those and realise I was letting my own emotions override... We all have these. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, but it's interesting, isn't it? I, I do think an important part of how we get to a better place as, as society now, away from this tribalism, away from all this stuff, is you've got to be prepared to have this kind of conversation, which doesn't end up with me just looking at you and shouting, well, you're a complete idiot because you don't agree with me, right? Um, it's more complicated. It's more nuanced. Life is more nuanced than that. I, I like to think so. And I think that, again, those conversations can be really, really productive. I try to make a habit. I have my regular daily show, mm -hmm. but I also have a show called The Sunday Special that you've been on, yeah. in which I bring on a bunch of people who disagree, from Bill Maher to Anna Kasparian. Yeah. And we actually try to talk through these issues. And people, I love Summer Cameron. I people... found it a very surprisingly pleasant experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a short break. I want to come back and ask you the, I mean, the most deadly question in the world right now. What is a woman? <laughs> Welcome back to Piers Morgan. Oh, here we go. Yeah, he's like, let's talk about transphobia. Uncensored live from New York. Ben Shapiro is live and uncensored. So come on, then. What is a woman? Well, I mean, a woman is whatever J.K. Rowling says a woman is. Right. <laughs> and uh, she's right. A woman is a biological human female. How on earth have we got to a place where stating that simple fact has now become a stick to beat people with? When, from what I can ascertain, 99% of the entire planet agrees with that fact. Yep. Again, it goes back to that idea that your subjective feeling about yourself must be reflected by the rest of the world, cheered and celebrated by the rest of the world, because that's that's actually what the ask is, right? The ask isn't even, you know, I wish to be treated well in society, and you can think whatever you want of me, but you should treat me decently. That, that's not the actual ask. The actual ask is, I wish for you to participate in a delusion whereby I am a biological human female, or exactly the same in many important respects as a biological human female. Trans women are women, which, again, if you refuse to define what... And you've what warned the... about this, and I've warned about it, and we've taken it to... We said in the warnings... It doesn't seem like he's describing what a woman is, though. It's so funny. They never do. They're like, a woman is a woman. A biological female. Okay, what is a biological female? And... Whenever you ask them that question, they're like, okay, well, chromosomes. And then you're like, okay, is Ann Coulter a woman then? Yeah, she is a woman. Okay. Inter <laughs> High likelihood that uh, I think, isn't she intersex? I think she is. I don't want to fucking. Or didn't she have a, like a chromosome thing? Am I crazy? I mean, Ben definitely doesn't know. Uh, ben definitely doesn't know uh, what a woman is anyway. <sighs> but um, a chatter actually correctly pointed this out. Um, saying that you're a biological female already, already gives the game away. You're talking outliers that represent 99.9% .9 of the population. No, that's not true. It's not 99.9% .9 of the population. Okay. And it doesn't matter. You can't just say something is an outlier and then act like that's not, um, act like that is a biological reality. Act like that's outside of the scope of biological reality. They can't parse gender and sex, so Ben's argument is dumb just from the assumption. Yeah, I mean, if if gender was uh was was not socially learned, okay, if gender was not socially learned, and it wasn't like super fun, if gender wasn't social. then you wouldn't have to separate it and say biological gender, biological sex.
Jewish people represent a small portion of society, but you wouldn't say they're not significant. Exactly. Also, uh, I think, wait, isn't that actually the same number? The number of intersex people on this planet is more than the number of Jewish people. The number of intersex people on this planet are the no, more than the number of um, the the uh, number of redheads. If we're going to talk about like biological, okay, more women than expected are genetically men. Sex chromosomes usually determine whether you are female or male. Women are XX, men are XY. However, genetically, few women are actually a few women are actually men. They grow up as women with a woman's body and mostly only discover well into puberty that they are different. Danish researchers map. The first time, how many women are genetically men? The proportion was higher than expected. The intersex estimate is 1.7%. Um, Jewish people make up 0.2% of the population on the planet. Also, as far as gender goes, that's an expression. You want to know why? Don't make me play the game again. Where I'm gonna pull pull up fucking Buck and numerous uh, other trans people to be like, is this a man? Is this a woman? And then you go, oh, that's a man. Oh, guess what? That's a trans man. That kind of thing. Okay. The reason why you you would lose that game if we were to do that. Let's not with the trans medical is though. I know, I know. It's just to open the door up. It's just to open the door, okay? It's to open the conversation. That's not the end-all, be-all of gender, okay? But that's a good way to just peek in and open the door for transphobic people to understand that gender is... Gender is a expression. Before everybody fucking freaks out. That's how this works. It's a good way to it's a good way to try to get people to comprehend this idea. Because you never in a million years will be like, I need to check your chromosomes. Okay? No one does that. Imagine going on a date and then you sit down, a woman is sitting in front of you, you go, I need to see your chromosomes to make sure that you're valid, that you're a woman. You don't do that. If you take this to a logical conclusion, it's going to get abused. And we had a stark example of this in Scotland several weeks ago with this rapist, Adam Graham, who, at his trial, having raped two women with his penis... I mean, let's be graphic her, about her, it. her penis. Well, this is the point. Yes. He, he then turned up as Isla... I hate that, like, the only time where they're, like... Where, where they will, like, listen to the fucking expression or listen to the gender pronouns that someone wants to be called by is when they're talking about one specific example of a fucking rapist is so vile dude it is so fucking vile and it totally gives the game away okay even if this person was truly a trans person which i don't think they are okay i don't know what the fuck's going on here I'm not familiar with this case because I don't follow every fucking, uh, I don't follow every goddamn last, uh, you know, issue of trans criminals magazine. Okay. They're committing a crime. Men, men, you know, assigned male at birth, men, cis men are responsible for the bulk, the overwhelming majority of pedophilia, okay? That does not mean all men are automatically, all cis men are automatically pedophiles. The controversy for this case was that the rapist said they were a woman, so demanded to be in a woman's prison. Bryson and said, I'm now a woman, so that's him before, and then he comes along as Isla Bryson there, and the, the game plan, according to his ex-wife, is well, he just wants to get into a women's prison, which is obviously what his game plan was. <clears throat> and he got into one, uh, put into a women's prison where there are women there who are vulnerable to attacks from people like him. Um, that, to me, showed the insanity of this. We had a leader, Nicola Sturgeon, been leader of Scotland for eight years, who supported this limitless gender identity nonsense and lost her job, actually, I think, as a direct consequence of this. Yep. I mean, let's see what she said. I'll, I'll play it to you. The question is, are all trans Look, women women? You haven't is, answered that question. Well, 
that's not the point that we're dealing with that's here. That's the question I'm asking. Like, trans women are, are women, but in the prison context, there is no automatic right for a trans woman. So there are contexts where a trans woman is not a woman? No, there is, <laughs> there is circumstances in which a trans woman uh, will be housed in the male prison estate. I think that interview cost her her job, because when I watched that, it went on for about 50 seconds, it was jaw-dropping, because actually her ideology about this was, was just cruelly exposed as being completely... Yeah, I know. Men get raped in men's prisons as well, uh, but that's not the point here. I don't know enough about this case. I don't even know enough about this particular case to give an adequate assessment. And the only thing I can tell you is that these bad faith insane dudes wouldn't think to do this if this hadn't become a culture war. Yeah, literally. Like, that dude, that dude, okay, saying, oh, I'm a woman now. Like, fucking put me in a woman's prison. Uh, no shot to put a rapist in gen pop. Exactly. It doesn't even fucking matter um, because there's no way that they're getting into gen pop. But... <coughs> That person coming out of the gate swinging and saying, like, I'm a woman now. I was I was always a woman. Is a new phenomena that conservatives brought to the fucking fold. Okay? Women literally get raped by other cis women in women's prisons. What the fuck is their point? Yeah, exactly. Nicola Sturgeon is stepping down due to stress and shit. She did not lose her position as first minister of Scotland. Did you cover the day of hate neo-Nazi announcement in your early news portion of the day? Yes, I did. They don't care about the trans woman being worshipped in men's prison? You think they decided to put him there to, on purpose to create this controversy? No, Scotland is actually uh, way, more, uh, way more understanding and way more fucking woke when it comes to trans issues than the rest of uh, the rest of the islands or the rest of the UK. But I don't know. Now I have to look at oh God. Now I have to look at this case. I don't even know what the fuck it is. God damn it. I hate this shit. This is the worst part about shit like this is that like you have to be up to date with like every new fucking psycho that comes out. She's in a men's prison. How is that woke? Wait, what? Wait, I don't get it. Oh, they they lied? Scotland did not put this person in a woman's prison? The law says that the determination is made on a case-by-case -case basis? As in this case where they were... Oh! Oh, my God. Oh, they just fucking straight up lied? Well, I would not have expected them to just fucking lie, dude. What the fuck? Newly convicted or remanded transgender prison inmates will initially be placed in jails according to the sex of birth. Scottish Prison Service has confirmed. The policy was confirmed that an urgent review, which found a double rape is being placed in a women's jail, did not put female prisoners at risk of harm. However, the SPS said it received conflicting details on Isla Bryson. It also called for an urgent review of admission rules for some inmates. The investigation was ordered by Justice Secretary Keith Brown of the wake of public outcry. outcry. Bryson, who will be sentenced later this month for raping two women while she was known as a man, Adam Graham, was then moved to a male wing at HMP Edinburgh. In an interview with BBC Scotland, Ms. Brown initially said the rule applied only to transgender people convicted of violence against women. But after an invest intervention from a member of his staff, the Justice Secretary clarified all transgender prisoners will go into an assessment prison service facility, which matches their sex of birth. Oh, so just, why does it lie? Guys, a YouTube clickbait title is a little bit different than fucking... Pierce Morgan straight up lying about a fucking f important fact that literally completely changes the, the argument that he made. That's crazy. Like, it changed the entire story. It's not just a clickbait YouTube title, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? That, this just, <laughs> that's insane. That is actually fucking insane. I, I was not, I, I would not have expected Piers Morgan on his own show to, to lie to this degree. Been leader of Scotland back 
So, yeah, so now we established that he lied about that. It was so completely ridiculous. One where tractors are referred to as black, they had to change that because somehow you can't... Some of the tonic class of the Roald Dahl books all having this sensitivity reading. Removing hundreds and hundreds of words and phrases from this, from this you know, iconic author. He's three, sold 300 million books. Suddenly they're rewriting this stuff. And some of the rewrites were so completely ridiculous. One where tractors are referred to as black, they had to change that because somehow you can't have a black tractor. Well, what if the tractor's black? One of the real problems here is that the modern context cannot understand why kids would read Roald Dahl. That really is the major issue. Right. So I, I read, I read Roald Dahl to my kids. I just got through, I think, pretty much his entire right. corpus with my six-year-old. And what, what? I don't even know what this is. What? What is this about, dude? I, I can't keep up to date with all the like fucking weird shit that uh, liberals do. Changes to the new editions of Roald Dahl books have readers up in arms. Okay, new editions of the legendary works by British author Roald Dahl are being edited to remove words that can be deemed offensive to some readers. What? Dude, this is always some shit that the publisher does. There, no one even asks for it. This is the same fucking shit with, uh, what's his face? Jesus Christ. It's just marketing, man. You guys are, I, I hate having this fucking conversation so many times over. It like doesn't do anything. They did this with Dr. Seuss too. No one asked for it. They just did it on their own. And then you do that and people get mad and then it drives more fucking book sales. And the irony, of course, is that, like, everyone is playing a role in the marketing campaign. Like, who gives a fuck? Who? The character Augustus Gloop and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is no longer called fat. Instead, he's described as enormous. Who, no one asked for this. No one. Not a single person on the level was like, we need to do this, Okay. I don't get it. I don't get why this is a point of contention. This does not change your life at all. I'm Norwegian. They're removing words like ugly and stupid and fat. And for the witches that wear wigs, they added a line saying, even if the witches weren't bald, they could wear wigs. What? Oh, none of this matters. None of this matters. This is all fucking lip shit. And they are liberals in the same way that these guys are. I can't do this. It's just like people are so fucking bored, dude. They just like manufacture bullshit over and over again. Like, who cares? Don't do this. Don't fucking do this. Okay, there you go. Don't do this. God, liberalism is a fucking... It's a fucking lie. No plans for doll text changes from U.S. European publishers. Wait, they're not even doing this? They just made it up? No, they did it in the UK, not in other territories. I've seen too much. I don't need to see anymore. I'm taking my glasses off. I don't need to read anymore. I've read too much. I've seen too much. I don't want to know. It's just like, so they did it only for the UK. And they're not doing it for the U.S., which they shouldn't have even done it for the U.K. Who does this help? Nobody. Like, when you get gifted a sub at the top of the hour, at least you're helping chatters. Avoid the top of the hour ad break, which comes at the top of every hour. There's a three-minute ad break, you know? If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Here's a three-minute ad break now. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm I'm done. I can't. I can't. I don't want to do this. It's like it's like hurting my soul.